In this segment I'm going to introduce another score that's used for ranking the matches of documents to a query, and that is to make use of this notion of document frequency. In particular we always use it in reverse, so it's normally referred to as inverse document frequency weighting. The idea behind making use of document frequency is that rare terms are more informative than frequent terms. So if you remember earlier on we talked about stop words, which was you know words like the and to and of. And so the idea that was that these words were so common, so semantically empty, that we didn't have to include them in our information retrieval system at all. They had no effect on how good a match a document was to a query. Well, that's maybe not quite true, but there's some truth in it. In particular, it seems like in general, very common words aren't very determinative of the matching of a document and a query, whereas rare words are more important. So consider a term in the query that is very rare in the collection, perhaps something like arachnocentric. Well, if someone had typed that word into their query and we can find a document that contains the word arachnocentric, it's very likely to be a document that the user would be interested in seeing. So we want to give a high weight in our match score for rare terms like arachnocentric. On the other hand, frequent terms are less informative than rare terms. So consider a term that is frequent in the collection, like high increase line, which might occur in lots of documents. Well, a document containing such a term is more likely to be relevant than a document that doesn't if the query contained one of those terms, but it's not such a sure indicator of relevance. So for frequent terms, we want to give positive weights for a document matching a term in the query, but lower weights than for rare terms. And so the way we're going to go about doing that is by making use of this notion of document frequency scores. So what exactly is that? Well, the document frequency of a term is the number of documents that contain the term. So what this means is that we're looking at the entire collection, so maybe the collection is a million documents, and if 10 documents have this word, we're saying that the document frequency is 10. So that's just counting the number of documents that occurs, regardless of the number of times that occurs. That's something I'll come back to. So document frequency is an inverse measure of informative the of informativeness of the term. And we also note that the document frequency has to be of a term has to be smaller than the number of documents in the collection. So putting that together this gives us the measure of inverse document frequency where we start with the document frequency and use it as the denominator and the numerator n here is the number of documents. So for a, a word that appears in just one document this part will be n and for a word that appears in every document, its value will be 1. So it's some value between 1 and n. And so then what we do after that is we take the log of it. And the log is used to dampen the effect of inverse document frequency. The idea again is that if you just use the absolute score, that would be too strong a factor. Now in this computation, as you can see, I've used log to the base 10, and that's very commonly used. But actually it turns out that what we use as the base of the log isn't really important. Okay, let's go through a concrete example, where again we're going to suppose that the size of our document collection is 1 million documents. So if we take an extremely rare word like Calpurnia, which let's say occurs in just one document, well then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking 1 million, the number of documents, um, divided by 1, and then taking the log of that, which means with log to the base 10, that that will be 6. If we take a somewhat more common word that occurs in maybe 100 documents, then we're going to get that the inverse document frequency of that is 4. And so then we can work on down for progressively um, more common words and the inverse document frequency will count down. And in particular for the, for the final case, if we assume that the word that occurred in every one of our documents, well then we've got a million divided by a million 
which is one. And if we take the log of that, which it, we get the answer zero. So the result we actually get is that a word that occurs in every document does have a weight of zero according to an IDF score and has no effect on the ordering of words in retrieval. And that makes sense because if it has if it occurs in every document, it has no discriminatory value between documents and gets a weight of zero. And so what you can see with these numbers overall though, is that this inverse document frequency weighting will give a small multiplier to pay more attention to words that are rarer words rather than very common words. Another thing to note here is that IDF values aren't things that change for each query, that there's precisely one IDF value for each term in the collection, and that's going to be the same regardless of what query you're issuing of the collection. Okay, here's a, a yes no question for you guys. Does the IDF have an effect on ranking for one term queries like this one? The answer is no, it doesn't. IDF has no effect on one-term queries. So for a one-term query, you're going to have one of these terms of n over the document frequency, and it will be worked out. But it's going to be just a scaling factor, which since there's only one IDF value for each term, will be applied to every document, and therefore it won't affect the ranking in any way. You only get an effect from IDF when you have multiple terms in a query. So for example, if we have the query capricious person, well now we're in a situation where capricious is a much rarer word, and so IDF will say, pay much more attention to documents that contain the word capricious than to documents that contain just the word person in ranking your retrieval results. There's another measure that reflects the frequency of a term, and indeed you might have been wondering why we're not using it. And that other measure is what information retrieval people refer to as the collection frequency of a term. So the collection frequency of a term is just the total number of times it appears in the collection, counting multiple occurrences. So that's the measure that we've been using in other places. It's the measure we are using to build unigram language models or when we're working out um, spam classifiers or something like that. But it's not what's usually used in information retrieval ranking systems. And this next example can maybe help explain why. So here we have two words, insurance and try. And I pick those two words because they have virtually identical collection frequency. Overall, they both occur somewhat more than 10,000 times in the collection. But let's then look at their document frequency. So the word try occurs in 8,700 odd documents. And that stands in contrast to insurance, which occurs in slightly under 4,000 documents. And so what does that mean? What that means is that when try occurs in a document, it tends to occur only once. But the try is widely distributed across documents. On the other hand, when insurance occurs in a document, it tends to occur several times. It tends to occur two to three times. And so what does that reflect? It reflects the fact that there tend to be documents about insurance, which then mention insurance several times, where there don't really tend to be documents about trying. And so what does that mean in terms of coming up with a score for retrieval systems with words matching? What it seems to suggest is that what we should be doing is giving higher weighting to instances of the word insurance appearing. So if we had some kind of, imagine some kind of query like try to buy insurance, the most important word to make sure we're finding in our documents to match the query is insurance, and probably the second most important word is buy, and try should be coming in third place before the near stop word of two. And so that's an idea that is being correctly captured by looking at the document frequency, but as you can see it's not 
captured by the collection frequency, which would score try and insurance equally. Okay, so I hope now you know what document frequency weighting is and why people usually use that as a retrieval ranking score rather than collection frequency.